Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm going to talk about five things a luxury watch should not have. <laughs> we all know what they should have, but what are some things that are a no-no when it comes to luxury, you know, higher-priced watches? Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing my Rolex Oyster Perpetual uh, Rhodium and Blue Dial newest watch in my collection and actually guys bunch of new watches at delraywatch.com white dial explorer 2 we have a green dial rolex uh, oyster perpetual we just got in a very cool and extremely ridiculously priced frank Mueller retrograde perpetual calendar chronograph completely a killer deal and we have actually quite a few RGMs in stock. That's Roland G. Murphy, uh, Roland G. Murphy, the American watchmaker. And one of the models we have is the RGM 101M, which is the first model Roland ever uh, kind of made under his own name. And it was extremely limited production. So if you want a piece of American watchmaking history, check out RGM, particularly the RGM 101. But anyway, guys, here's the list of five things a luxury watch should not have. Now, luxury products, you know, we come to expect the best of the best. You know, attention to detail, craftsmanship, history, all that good stuff. But unfortunately, cost-cutting escapes nobody uh, or very few. And here's a few things you should be unhappy with if a luxury watch uh, includes one of these materials or features. The first one is plastic movement holders. Now, I know a lot of people say, actually, I mentioned this in a video before, Federico, they're better at shock resistance. What do you care? You never see them. It's the principle. Why, if it's a luxury product, they shouldn't be using, you know, inferior materials. First of all, no, it's not better for shock resistance. That's bullshit. Uh, but also, it's blatant cost cutting. And it's just not a good feeling when, you know, you're getting a top upper echelon watch that should be built to a certain standard, and you can tell where they blatantly cost cut. Uh, this can be seen in, in watches such as the Tag Heuer Formula One and, and uh, Tag Heuer Aqua Racer, so the bottom of the range. Uh, Cartier used it in their Croissant, uh, Croissier, Cier Cartier Cruise, excuse me, my French is awful. There are a few lower end models and a few brands that have used plastic movement holders, and to me, is completely unacceptable and is a sign of absolute cost cutting. The next one, which is uh, not particularly common, but I have seen it a few times, and that is stamped grain straps. That is, you buy a watch with an alligator strap that's not actually alligator. Now, yes, I know cruelty to animals, all that. Once again, not the point. It's for cost cuttings. Longines doesn't give a crap about saving the alligators, which, by the way, are farmed. They care about saving money on their master collection. Um, at least they used to be. I don't know if they're still doing it, but there are a few luxury watch brands out there that come with calf straps that are embossed to look like alligator. And once again, if you have an eye, uh, you know, not to toot my own horn like I do, where I've seen thousands of them, I can tell them by a mile away. And that is a $15 strap on a $3,000 watch, and it's absolute bullshit. Third, also quite rare, and I'm actually happy that this is quite rare, that I'll, not, not, none of these are particularly common, but uh, undecorated movements. Um, that is basically taking an out of 20, 24, a Valjoux 7750, and not decorating it at all. Maybe just putting a rotor on it. Oris, I'm looking at you. Once again, not in all their watches. And none of these are in all their watches. I mentioned Cartier, Tag Heuer. These are just instances in a few of their lines. And Oris, I've seen my fair share of undecorated Etta 2824s with a painted red ro Oris rotor. And I'm sorry, just not going to cut it. For that price, at least order it with some perlage. Oris doesn't even have to decorate it themselves. They can order it already decorated for like 40 bucks more. Uh, so why cheap out on that? I think you absolutely need a decorated movement on any watch that's over a thousand dollars. Period. Full stop. No, uh, no reason not to. 
Fourth, and actually this is the most common and the one that kind of pisses me off the most, and that is generic deployment buckles. Now, I've noticed this because I've handled thousands of watches, but maybe you've noticed it too. Uh, there are companies out there that make watch parts. You know, this company makes sapphire crystals. This company makes buckles. That company makes cases. Well, there is a, a deployant manufacturer, most likely out of China, that has made the same shape deployant for years. And a lot of, uh, you know, lower-end luxury brands, I've seen... Who have I seen use it? I mean, I've seen... Long, no, not even Longines. I, I've seen a lot... Every micro brand under the sun use it. I've seen Dublin Schaldenbrand use it back in the day, not anymore. I've seen even Glasute use it in the beginning, where it's the same deployment buckle from the same factory. They just order it with their logo laser etched in it. But it's the same model. It looks, it's the exact same thing, but, you know, with a logo etched into it. And I just think, you know... I'm not saying watchmakers have to make their own buckles. I understand outsourcing. I understand some things are just more cost effective. But don't order it out of a generic catalog. If you see Glasuta has it, then Dubuis and Schaldenbrand hasn't. Uh, shouldn't have it. If Bowen Mercier uses it, then, I don't know, Pat Patek Philippe shouldn't. I, it, I'm not saying, you know, that's just an example. Of course, Patek Philippe never did. But, you know, stop ordering out of a parts bin. Um, people do notice. And then last one, and this is by far the least um, common, thankfully, and that is shitty quality control. And I'm not saying that the watch doesn't work, but literally shitty quality control. Like looking at the watch and you can see dust under the crystal. And this is new watches, not pre-owned watches. I mean, sometimes companies service them and you can't blame the brand for that. That's just a watchmaker with no attention for detail. But, you know, sometimes you can see sloppy text. I've seen Frank Mueller have that. Sometimes you see dust under the dial. I saw a Bon Merci have that back in the day. Fairly uncommon, but just the fact that one of those gets past quality control, it might be, I mean, I guess there's always a percentage that escapes. And luckily, I haven't seen any brand where I've seen multiple instances of it. So I guess, you know, you can always forgive someone for a one-off. But it's just one of those things, you know, crappy quality control. Things should not pass uh, unnoticed. You know, you should be putting in the attention to detail to every watch you produce to make sure that they meet your standard. Or maybe just make sure that your standard is high enough to begin with. Anyway, guys, those are five things your luxury watch absolutely should not have. And God forbid you have all of these things. Well then you probably just bought a movement watch. Oh, sorry, shot's taken a movement. Full disclosure, I can't prove that movement has any of these. I mean, plastic movement holders for sure, st stamped straps for sure, generic, I mean, the whole damn watch is generic. I can't really speak to their quality control. But, you know, four out of five makes you a movement watch. So what does five out of five make you? I don't know, but something worth throwing away for sure. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.